I'm your host, Dr. Wolfulan. When I'm not being asked if the circus is in town every time I enter a room for some reason, I'm here at the Wolfie Lair reviewing movies. And I'd also like to state that the circus is never in town. Uh, speaking of the circus, today's film review features a murderous jester by the name of Art the Clown in his first full-length feature film. Now, you might recall All Hallows' Eve, which featured Art, but that flick was just an anthology film that mostly compiled old shorts by the film's director slash writer Damien Leone, two of which featured art, along with the wraparound segments. The short compilation approach makes for a kind of puzzling experience for uninformed viewers because the first short, The Ninth Circle, features an early version of Art the Clown that looks drastically different from the more familiar incarnations. Even though Art hasn't had many appearances beyond a couple shorts and now a feature film, the character has garnered quite the cult following, mostly based on appearance alone. I don't really get the appeal, though. He kind of just looks like Kim Kardashian dressed as a mime. And what's up with the hood that he wears? It's like Art is wearing the most obvious bald cap ever. Well, regardless of whether or not Art the Clown looks like Ileana Douglas going through a goth phase, Art finally garnered his own full-length movie without having to share the runtime with a fucking retarded scuba diver alien. An adaptation of the short Terrifier, which was in All Hallows' Eve. The feature film adaptation is pretty different from the short, though, but Damien Leone hits a lot of the same beats with the full-length movie. Does Terrifier live up to its vague, generic title, which I'm pretty sure is not a word? Let's see for ourselves. Now, Terrifier opens in media res. Art's already done all the shit he's going to do in the movie, and an old staticky TV plays a talk show segment featuring one of his victims, who is terribly disfigured. People are frightened by the way that I look especially children. Okay, what the fuck is going on? Are you kidding me with this shit? She looks like she should be in the background of Moss Eisley Cantina smoking a hookah. Is she a member of the Trade Federation? She doesn't even remotely look human. Getting your face disfigured does not give you more face. It's a good thing they put the static effects all over this footage because it'd just be ridiculousness beyond comprehension if you could make it out clearly. The authorities issued a statement claiming that his body disappeared from the county coroner's office the morning after the attack. He's dead. I saw it happen. Like, from the very get-go, this is just a complete and total abject failure at being shocking. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's flick the dial back a year on Halloween and pretend that expository bullshit with the alien chick just didn't happen. The plot concerns two women on Halloween night, Tara and Dawn, dressed as Slutty Skeleton and Slutty Scarecrow, respectively. You gave that asshole your number, didn't you? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm so jealous. The two ladies just left a Halloween party that was too expensive to show, leaving Dawn totally shit-faced, and the girls run into Art the Clown, whose reveal in the movie is literally just a flat-angle long shot of him walking down the sidewalk like he's in a Seinfeld episode. Really leaves a strong first impression. What? Look. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that's not funny. I'm about to scream. <laughs> Cut it out. Upon seeing a lone adult man dressed as a killer clown carrying a garbage bag that also suddenly disappears, the two girls decide to take a diversion at a nearby pizza place instead of driving the fuck out of there right away. This was clearly a mistake writing-wise, because it creates another situation where the characters have to exchange dialogue like normal human beings, which is easier said than done with some movies. That was the longest piss I've ever taken. Yes, this is one of those movies. Art, of course, shows up at the pizzeria, and I don't think it's for a slice of za. Art mugs for Tara, but when he gets teased by Don, he broods like a goth teenager getting poked fun at by the preppies. If I was Tara, I wouldn't go to school tomorrow. 
Thanks. Honestly, it's hard to really be afraid of Art the Clown when all the characters are so casual around him when he's not killing motherfuckers. I know it's Halloween, but they all act like he's not a sketchy killer clown looking dude carrying a garbage bag. The Kirsten Dunst teeth alone should cause concern. Like, imagine Jason Voorhees going to fucking Buffalo Wild Wings and not having somebody call the cops on sight. You shouldn't normalize your killers like this. It's Halloween and Halloween too, but I'm not seeing Michael Myers hanging out at the fucking mall. If you don't order anything, you're gonna have to leave. Well, the movie tries to make Art other again by having him slink into the bathroom and shit all over the place. No wonder Art didn't order a pizza. He went to Taco Bell before coming here. Let the guy who handles food take care of it. Real fucking sanitary. The girls return to their car and find that the tires have been slashed, and since they don't have headphones, they can't call an Uber, so Kara requests a ride from her also college-age sister, Victoria. You know what? I gotta stretch my legs and... Besides, I feel I can always blame you. You are the best sister in the world. During the wait, though, Kara has to take the longest piss of her life as well. I really have to pee. And manages to talk her way into the bathroom of a nearby spooky derelict building. Really, the lesson of this movie early on is apparently that you should wait to take a piss at home. Don't use any public restrooms because you might wind up the prey of a clown in serious need of braces. <laughs> Honestly, Terrifier's premise is passable for any standard slasher movie and could propel a horror film to at least adequacy, granted that the horror was handled reasonably well, but eh, that's just not the case with Terrifier. Going in, I expected a back-to-basic slasher flick, and it does have the trappings of one, but it's much more accurate to describe Terrifier as flat-out torture porn. Scenes that are supposed to be suspenseful are really lazily done. Characters will just shamble a few feet away from danger, sometimes even falling on their face for no given reason, and find a hiding spot virtually in plain sight like this is an episode of Scooby-Doo. Kara hides from Art behind a car and pokes her whole ass head through the windows. It's the kind of staging you'd see in a triple X parody of a slasher film. Really, Terrifier relies far more heavily on putting its characters in situations where they're restrained and totally powerless, so Art can just have his way with them free from the burden of building suspense. The effects aren't even all that good, if the alien life form meant to depict the survivor of a mass murderer at the beginning isn't enough indication. It feels like the extreme amount of blood the movie employs is just to hide the really obvious rubber of all the gore. The first real kill of a major character is Dawn hung upside down naked, and Art uses a saw to cut her in half from the pussy down. This could have been reasonably shocking if it was, eh, you know, shot better, had better effects, and featured a victim that wasn't a vapid cardboard cutout who didn't act the same way throughout the entire process of being cut in half. <laughs> Shock value doesn't have much worth when there's been no effort put into making it pay off. Why do I care about these horrible things happening to the characters when I don't give a shit about the characters? I'm telling you, that guy totally whacked off in there. He was obviously turned on by you. You're fucking sick. You know that? <laughs> Kara and Dawn are one-dimensional and unlikable. All I know about them is that Dawn is a dumb, slutty blonde, and Kara is less interesting Daria, and they both pee at some point in the movie. I can't just pop a squat in the middle of the street and pee like you do. And then there's Victoria, who spends a lot of her runtime driving in a car by herself while hearing increasingly alarming expository info on the radio. Police are still on the lookout for a man involved in a brutal slaying of two employees at Deer Hills Pizzeria this morning. The violence is just dumb and gratuitous without feeling earned. All semblance of suspense is absolutely thrown out the window once Art just starts using a fucking gun. Terrifier even manages to make its fairly simple killer clown on the loose concept feel disjointed. There's only really two to three main characters in the movie, and one of them spends much of the runtime driving to the location where the horror is going on. Really? You need to have more motherfuckers to kill to pad out the body count, so the flick tacks on very minor characters who are just wandering into the abandoned building, or are just cast off to the side completely, and the scenes with these folks tend to just feel like random, isolated asides that could have easily been cut out. Mike! Terrifier makes Friday the 13th victims seem fleshed out and interesting. Once the main characters leave the pizzeria, whatever happens there stops being relevant to the plot. Do we need to know that after Art made a poor guy clean up his diarrhea, the clown went sick house on the dude? Then there's the one deranged homeless lady hanging out in the building who brandishes the cliche creepy doll that she calls her baby. It's been quite a while since we've had neighbors. Perhaps we can do our laundry together. 
I could use some good company. The actress portraying the homeless chick is either really shitty at acting, or she's an extraterrestrial that's doing her damnedest to simulate human emotion. Have you ever felt a mother's touch? Either way, the character is pointless. Just a lame attempt at creepiness and another body to add to the count. Yes, dead, dead, all dead. He's killing them one by one by one like cows. Look, lady. Then to round things out, there's the exterminator guy bug bombing rats who's totally oblivious to all the mayhem. Mister! Help me, please! Oh no, he's got AirPods on. Oh no, he can't hear her. Terrifier just feels like a bunch of loosely connected shorts tied together in the same building. A more disorganized All Hallows Eve 3. Terrifier ultimately feels like a crude effects demo with little effort put anywhere else. It doesn't help that the movie looks like it was shot with an Instagram filter on. Like Night Shift Mode was activated the whole time. Really accomplishes the grindhouse feel, I guess. The only real draw to the movie is, well, uh, Art the Clown, played by David Howard Thornton, who delivers a memorable, manic performance as, well, essentially an it. Art's pretty much a magic supernatural clown guy. Not much to him beyond that, but it's a pretty creepy performance. There just aren't many opportunities for the guy to do more weird, interesting clowning around. Instead, he'll end up doing boring shit like hit a guy in the head with a regular hammer. Come on, he's a clown, right? Have him do more clown-themed shit instead of generic slasher killer shit. I don't know. I know this film has its fans, but I just didn't really enjoy Enjoy Terrifier, honestly. The premise of the original short is spread thin across 81 minutes. For such a gory flick, there's just not a whole lot of meat there to stay invested. And the beginning of the movie pretty much spoils the end and makes it even more predictable. Yet they treat the end like some grand twist. There's just no suspense or tension. Just a couple stupid chicks bumbling around inside a building and running into randos who get killed. At least Friday the 13th characters will have a few scenes of dialogue and interaction with each other before they get killed. Terrifier is just a hollow shell of a slasher film. I give Terrifier a shit-covered bathroom out of Alien Chick. Is Art the Clown short for Arthur the Clown? Really fucking scary. Before I go, I'd like to give a special shout out to a few patrons. Matthew Flowers, Ian Korchik, Sean O'Brien, and Nate Malice. Also, hope you feel better soon, Serafina. Get well. If you liked this video, be sure to like it, but if you loved it, make sure to subscribe to me, Dr. Wolfula. Oh, and keep in touch with me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Dr. Wolfula. Be sure to also help support the channel in any way you can, especially by donating to my Patreon, where you can keep up with me, get exclusive content, and talk to me directly. Finally, I have some new merch available on Tee Public, so if you'd like to wear some Dr. Wolfula or even goulash swag, head on down there. Of course, the channel wouldn't be possible without all the support I've gotten from my fans on Patreon, and I'd like to thank these folks for helping me make this happen. It really is an honor to make content for so many swell people, and I hope to do you guys proud in the future. Thanks to all of you once again from your old pal, Dr. Wolfula. That was the longest piss I've ever taken.